Sup. Welcome back. It's day five on our journey from zero to hero cadence development. Um, it's your host, Jacob Tucker, best developer in the world. There's a bunch of different names for me, um, but let's get right into it. So in this video, we're going to be going over some, uh, some types um, and something called optionals of cadence. So hopefully this will provide some context for the different types we're going to be seeing in upcoming videos and uh, yeah, just help in our, in our journey on learning cadence syntax. So I have a simple playground booted up. Um, this will hopefully be a short video. Um, and you know, we're not going to be dealing with contracts today. I'm, I just have a script going and we're going to just start looking at, uh, you know, types with compile time errors here, which is why I have the playground booted up. So let's actually start uh, making some variables. So let's say var a equals three, right? This is possible in cadence, um, but what it's actually doing behind the scenes is it's it's basically like saying that a it now has to be uh, an integer. Okay, so if I was to now say a equals high, um, it's going to give me an error, and it's going to say mismatch types expected int got string. So you have to make sure that your variables are keeping um, you know consistency with what type they are. And sometimes what I like to do in cadence to actually just like be very explicit. Um, and remember, part of the, the, the thing about flow and cadence is the developer experience. So what I like to do is actually just specify exactly what the type is going to be on this uh, variable. And that way it's easier for a developer who's reading my code to actually see that this uh, is an integer, right? Um, and so you can do this syntax in cadence where you have var or let. Uh, you know, let for constants and var for variables, the name of the variable, and then colon and type, and then you can set it to something, right? So in this case, a is three. Um, and so we could also just say a is two, and it is, that's totally fine as well, right? So that's simple stuff. So I wanted to go over some other types of, um, you know, variables. We can have variable b, um, and this can be some, uh, you know, a un64. Um, if you see uint, uh, uint means a unsigned integer, so only positive numbers. Um, and the, the number that comes after is how many bits it is. So when you talk about, uh, you know, 64 bit, that means any number from zero to two to the 64 power. Um, uh, and so, you know, that's a pretty large number. And so oftentimes in my programming, I like to use UN64 because it just seems to work. And, you know, you're dealing with positive numbers. And so that's all good, right? And so in this case, if we try to say B equals negative one, Bam, it's out of range. See, because it's not a, uh, it's not zero or above. Um, up to two to the 64 minus one, I think, actually, is what it is. Um, so that's, you'll see that sometimes. Um, all right. Now, another thing you might see is something called var c, uh, let's say um, u fix uh, 64 or something like that. Um, I tend to, um, oh, sorry. I tend to uh, use u, u fix a lot. U fix is basically just means it can have a decimal. So, you know, like 2.2 or whatever it is. So this is for decimals. And again, it's 64 bit. You could also just u fix. Uh, oh, I guess you can't. Um, so learning stuff on the spot. Um, but you know, u fix just means decimals and stuff like that. And then obviously, you know, you have like strings, right? Uh, which equals like, hello, um, stuff like that. So this is pretty basic uh, syntax. And I just wanted to uh, kind of go over some of this since you'll be seeing it a lot. Um, cool. Now, I also want to make a note that I'm, the next video that I'm going to make is going to be on structs, arrays, and dictionaries. So we're going to worry about those types in the next video. But these are just some basic stuff that you can use. Now, I want to get into something uh, called optionals. So I'm actually I'm going to make a new script here just so that we can, uh, just so that we can uh, not have to delete this stuff. But if the flow playground wants to respond, uh, OK, so we're just going to get rid of this. Sorry. OK. So there's something called optionals in Cadence. So it's called an optional type. Um, and an optional type, uh, I'm going to type this out. It's not going to make any sense, but just bear with me. An optional type either means this value is nil or the thing we put. OK, so that probably makes no sense. But let's look at an example. Var a is an int question mark, which means this is an optional type, equals 2. Um, now, what this means is that, uh, well, actually, let's, let's, let's back up for a second. So when you see something that has uh, a type and then a question mark after it, that means it's an optional. Um, and what an optional means is this variable a is either nil or the thing we put, int. So it's either nil or an int. So what we can do is we can actually say var a equals 2 right, because it's an int, right, There's the or, or it's nil, so it can be either one. 
Now, I want to make a point that uh, the reason we're talking about this is because if you were to say var b is an int, you can't say it's nil. Um, it actually gives you a, a, a error here, right? So you can only have nil if it's an optional type. Um, and so you, we're going to see nil popping up a lot, especially as we start dealing with resources, which is a separate video, and also we'll see a, a glimpse of it in, in the dictionary video tomorrow. Um, but uh, optionals are, are a pretty important type in Cadence. Um, and so in order to actually, you know, s uh, specify exactly what we're looking for, you know, sometimes we'll get an error that sends like, uh, you know, I'll give you an example. Let's say we have a function, and uh, you can't, okay, here, I'll do this. So let's say we have a function, right, public function uh, test, um, and this function, uh, I don't know, takes in a number that's an integer, um, and it just uh, does something, right, so something, okay. Now, what might happen is sometimes it'll, you know, you'll call a function test and you'll call it with uh, a integer question mark, and it'll say mismatch types received int question mark but expected int. Now, you'll see that a lot in Cadence where it expects, um, you know, the actual type which is int, but it's receiving an optional. And the way to actually at, to actually get the type from an optional is to do something with something called the the force unwrap operator. Um, and so the force, so there's something called the force unwrap operator. Um, and this is uh, this uh, syntax right here. So this was, you know, a question mark and, and, and uh, like that. And so this actually gets the thing we put out of the optional. So remember, the th when I keep saying the thing we put, I mean the actual like int here. So out of the thing that we put. Um, otherwise, so... Otherwise, we panic and abort the program. So that means that if we try to force unwrap, in, let's say, right, so right here, actually, it's a good example. So if we had var b, right, uh, which is an int equals a, right? So this is a perfect example, right? It says mismatch types, expected int, right? Because b we said is an int, but it got int question mark. That's what a is. So in order to, to do that, we have to unwrap this uh, a here, right? Because um, we're hoping that if a is not nil, then we'll actually get the integer out of it. But look what happens when we run this. Execute. Unexpectedly found nil while forcing an optional value, and so it gave us an error and completely aborted the program. And the reason for that is because a is a nil, and so it said, oh my god, there actually is no int there. It's a nil, so get out of the program. So that's the problem, right? But let's actually do something different now, where we say a is 2, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to log, we're going to unwrap a, so actually get the integer out of it, which is two, and then log it. So we'll execute, and look, it logs two. So that's what optionals are in Cadence, um, and we'll we'll see um, a much clearer use case for them in the future. But I just wanted to introduce that to you now. So with that, thanks so much for tuning in again, and I will see you in the next one. Boom.